Welcome to Start With Small Steps podcast. Every day I see people get overwhelmed by their daily lives, their projects at work, and teams at work getting overwhelmed by projects at work. They take tasks, every action, ball them up together until they are a giant dark cloud that follows them around. For kicks, they throw in a few unneeded tasks, unrealistic fears, and rampaging emotions. It's no wonder when they need action, the project is too large and seems insurmountable. I wanted to do a podcast for a while. I wasn't really sure what the best approach would be to help people. But then the speech came that finally made it clear to me, taking small steps. The idea behind this podcast came from Queen Elizabeth II's Christmas 2019 speech. In it, she begins by mentioning big events in history. She talks about the first step on the moon. Millions of us sat transfixed to our television screens as we watched Neil Armstrong taking a small step for man and a giant leap for mankind, and indeed for womankind. It's a reminder for us all that giant leaps often start with small steps. If you watched the last season of The Crown, you saw the depiction of that event and the impact it had on the Queen's family. And she's right. Neil Armstrong came out of the capsule after so many small steps went before him. This was not one heroic event, but millions of heroic events, each of them one small step. She talks about the D-Day reunion and rebuilding trust among the nations. Those who had formerly been sworn enemies came together in friendly commemorations either side of the channel, putting past differences behind them. Such reconciliation seldom happens overnight. It takes patience and time to rebuild trust, and progress often comes through small steps. Relationships are hard, but with small steps, we can build each other up and build that bridge of trust again. We can even build trust in ourselves. And even the journey from Bethlehem to Jerusalem was about small steps. Of course, at the heart of the Christmas story lies the birth of a child, a seemingly small and insignificant step overlooked by many in Bethlehem. But in time, through his teaching and by his example, Jesus Christ would show the world how small steps taken in faith and in hope can overcome long-held differences and deep-seated divisions to bring harmony and understanding. Many of us already try to follow in his footsteps. The path, of course, is not always smooth, and may at times this year have felt quite bumpy, but small steps can make a world of difference. She ends her speech with this quote, It sums up the goal of my podcast, which is to give everyone small steps that we can each take to better our lives, our families, our nation, and our world. Then the Queen brings it to challenges of today which were hard and almost impossible, and she didn't even know about 2020 yet. And as we all look forward to the start of a new decade, it's worth remembering that it is often the small steps, not the giant leaps, that bring about the most lasting change. To read her full speech or listen to it, you can go to my website and the show notes. That is what my goal for this podcast is, and for this community, Together, we can look for small steps and learn how to put them into action. The Queen's speech was inspiring to me, and I look forward to inspiring you and to be inspired by you. So now I want to share with you some of my favorite people who talk about small steps. The first is James Clear. He wrote a book called Atomic Habits. Most of his book is about habits and winning at creating and following through on them. James Clear on his website talks about marginal gains, and this is what he says. Meanwhile, improving by 1% isn't particularly notable. Sometimes it's not even noticeable, but it can be far more meaningful, especially in the long run. The difference a tiny improvement can make over time is astounding. Here's how the math works. If you get 1% better each day for one year, you'll end up 37 times better by the time you're done. In his book, he says, habits are compound interest of self-improvement. The same way money multiplies through compound interest, the effect on your habits multiply as you repeat them. 
They seem to make little difference on any given day, and yet the impact they deliver over months and years can be enormous. It's only when looking back two, five, perhaps 10 years later, that the value of good habits and the cost of bad ones becomes strikingly apparent. Here's an interesting thought brought up by the Business Insider website. What if you saved $1 every day of your life? In 50 years, you would have $18,250. But change isn't just change itself. It earns interest. If we take a walk every day, we would start to walk faster and burn more calories and get more fit. Maybe you would encourage us to start running or hiking, and then we'd even lose more weight and get even more healthy. That $1 becomes $23,646 in a 1% money market account. And if we invested it in a money market with about 11% gain, you would earn about $600,000. Change compounds and grows even when it isn't money. Think big. I learned how to save by losing weight. The incremental life helped me understand how to shave money off my budget and put it into savings. They seem unrelated, but the lesson created ripples in my life. If you keep a house organized, you also gain by not spending time putting things away or looking for things, more ripples. If you decide you want to write a book, let's say you want to write a 5,000 word book, small. What if you wrote 50 pages a day? Then you would have a book in 100 days. But it would also mean that you got better at writing books. The next book will be easier and better. Then there's B.J. Fogg, who's a Stanford professor who spoke about tiny habits years before writing his book. He has a three-step formula for these tiny habits. He calls for a tiny behavior, an anchor moment, and then a celebration. When picking a tiny behavior, he says there's three criteria. One, you can do the habit. Make sure it's not too hard. Two, you think the habit will be effective, so you think it'll actually make good changes in your life. Three, you want to do the habit. Habits are really hard when you want to do them. If you don't want to do them, they're impossible. He then makes the goal even tinier by making the steps towards the goal smaller or making the goal itself smaller. When you think of it in terms of weight loss, can you make smaller sub goals like losing one pound instead of being faced with 50? Can you break weight loss down into smaller steps like replacing a snack with some vegetables or making your meals smaller, maybe going for a walk every day after lunch? When he talks about tiny habits, he means really, really tiny habits. Flossing two teeth, doing two squats, Saving $10. That's the goal. It's so tiny, you'll never fail. It will always be the goal, even if you're an overachiever and do more. Doesn't that sound better because you flossed all your teeth, which was above the expectation? It's certainly better than lamenting forgetting to floss any teeth. This way, if you ever fall flat on your entire behavior, you can always settle back into that tiny habit and build up again. He matches the identity of the tiny habit with a trigger, which is something you do now. Maybe you drink water after you give the cat more water. Maybe you do squats while brushing your teeth. Maybe you pray while getting dressed in the morning. It has to be something you already do regularly and you tie them closely together. If it doesn't work, he asks you to check to see if the habit was too hard, something you really didn't want to do, something you forgot, or the trigger needed to be better tied to the event. One thing to keep in mind about triggers is making sure they're not too random or they happen at the right interval. I noticed when he mentioned visitors or Girl Scouts coming to his door as a trigger. For me, I don't have enough visitors that show up by surprise or Girl Scouts, so it would be a horrible trigger. It must be relevant to you and regular enough for you to follow. And if it's something that doesn't have to be done quickly, or often, you can tie it to a long-standing trigger. I tell myself when I work out at home, I only have to put on gym clothes. I don't even have to exercise. And the trigger is when work is over. I celebrate by putting in my favorite Audible book or TV show that's reserved for exercise time. When I'm done, 
I also celebrate by putting on more comfortable clothes. The gym clothes stay on until I'm done exercising. If I wasn't exercising at home, but instead was riding my bike, I would tell myself that after work, I have to get to the bike trail and just bike for five minutes. That's it. I can go home after that. My reward is I can set my alarm for an extra 15 minutes the next morning. Every day after workout, I have to make a salad, but I don't have to eat it. I usually do. I clean my kitchen while I'm making meals. And the reward turns out to be, well, basically a much cleaner kitchen without investing a lot of time. At one time, I had an adventure fund where a dollar went into the fund for every good habit. The system was too complicated, but I think it was on the right track. Maybe I'll pursue it again someday. Every time I go up or downstairs, I bring an item with me and put it away. It doesn't take much time, and I mentally pat myself on the back for doing it. When I travel for work, I ask the restaurant staff to put half the meal in a container so that I can take it back to my hotel room. This is before I even see the meal. That way there's no temptation to eat the other half. I get a second delicious meal without any effort, and I don't put on weight when I travel. My long-term habit is when I get raises, I put all the money in my 401k as a percentage because I already got used to living without that money. Now I save a lot towards my retirement. For celebration, you might save for a special show, a special movie, eat at your favorite restaurant, maybe throw a dollar in your adventure fund. It can be tiny and low cost, but keep in mind it should never step on your other goals. If you're trying to lose weight, don't reward yourself with food. On his webpage, you can find 300 recipes for tiny habits to help stir your creativity in building your own. An investment manager and speaker, Stephen Dunier, has a TED Talk, which he discussed his desire to lose weight and hike all 33 trails in the Santa Barbara Mountains. Part of what he said is, you have to break big ambitious goals down into more manageable decisions, the type of decisions that need to be made correctly along the way in order to improve the odds of achieving the type of outcome you desire. It's not about one trail. It's about those tiny decisions, you know, like when you're sitting at your desk, putting in a little extra time at the end of the day, or lying on your couch and clicking through the channels on your remote or scrolling through your Facebook feed. In that moment, make the decision to put it down. Go put on your hiking clothes. You go outside your front door and you shut it behind you. You walk to your car, get in, drive to the trailhead. You get out of the car at the trailhead and you take one step. You take two steps, three steps. Every one of those steps that I have just described is a tiny decision that needs to be made correctly along the way in order to achieve the ultimate outcome. So when I say I want to hike 33 trails in the front country, people ask me about the decisions at the top of the mountain. That's not what this is about. But if you don't make the right decisions when you're on the couch, there's no decision that occurs at the top of the mountain. Later, he decided to read 50 books. And this is what he says about that. But then again, it's not about reading 50 books. It's not even about reading one book. It's about reading a chapter, a paragraph, a sentence. It's about that decision when you're sitting at your desk at the end of the day or lying on the couch or flicking through your Facebook feed and you put it down. You pick up a book. You read a word. If you read a word, you'll read two words, three words. You'll read a sentence, a paragraph, a page, a chapter, a book. You'll read 10 books, 30 books, 50 books. Of course, small steps isn't entirely new as a concept. Lao Tzu said almost 2,400 years ago that a journey of a thousand miles begins with small steps. Then in business, there's a concept of Kaizen. It's a Japanese word meaning change for the better. In business, it tends to mean continuous improvement. And these measures are usually very small and isolated and very easy to implement. Continuous change. As you can see, small steps are everywhere. Have you ever heard of the Half Size Me podcast? I'm a big fan because it talks about hitting the one thing you need to make the biggest impact. Just one thing. If you have two snacks a day, can you try one? 
If you have a glass of wine every night after dinner, can you just do it four nights? The host talks to people who want to jump in and lose a lot of weight, but grown at mentioning just losing one pound a week. Personally, if I followed the plan to lose one pound a week, I would be down over 2,000 pounds. Summary. Small steps lead to lasting change, rebuilt relationships, and achieved goals, despite the bumps in the road. Point two. If you can get 1% better every day for one year, you'll end up 37 times better. Point three. Make sure you break your goals into small steps so small that you cannot fail. Point four, create connected triggers when you take the action. Name the tiny, tiny habit and then create a celebration. Point five, if you can't make the goal smaller, break it into tinier actions. So here's our challenge. Let's pick one thing you can break into small, tiny actions that you know you can do. Can you do one push up? Can you clean for 10 minutes? Can you save $10 and put it aside? Then try for the next week to have seven days of success. Let me know if it works and what happened by contacting me preferably on the Slack channel or on my Facebook group or on my website. If you wish to remain private, there is a contact page and it's all there for you on smallstepspod.com. And for our fun thing of the day, we're going to play a piece of advice from somewhere in culture, whether it's movie, television, or books. We need to remember what's important in life. Friends, waffles, and work. Or waffles, friends, work. It doesn't matter. But work is third. And that, of course, was Parks and Rec. Leslie Nope talking about the importance of friendship, and waffles, and work. That was in season three in an episode called The Fight. Is this good advice? Are waffles really this important? I think so. Is business third? Mm, could be. But anyway, let me know what you think. Please subscribe. Tell a friend. Leave a review. It helps other people find this podcast, which is brand new. Thank you and have a great day. Bye.